Hey, welcome to Roads to Forever. I'm Terry, and in this video, I'm sharing which probiotics are best for gut health. And if you've watched any of my stomach ulcer videos, then you know that probiotics were instrumental in healing my stomach ulcer naturally without taking any medications. That's right, I was able to heal my stomach ulcer naturally with no medications. And if you haven't seen those videos, don't worry, I'll make sure to link them in the description box down below so that you can check them out after this video is over. So before we jump to the best probiotics, let's take a quick look at an overview of probiotics in general. So basically what probiotics do, how probiotics work, and are probiotics even good for you? So what are probiotics? Well, I'm glad you asked. Probiotics are good bacteria known for their role in maintaining digestive health and providing a boost to your immune system. And this is not surprising when we think about the immune boosting properties of probiotics because about 70% of your immune system is housed in your gut. And though researchers are still trying to figure out exactly how probiotics work, one thing we do know is that probiotics work to restore balance in the gut should there be unhealthy levels of certain bacteria. Good bacteria like probiotics will support your immune function and help control inflammation. So what are some other health benefits of probiotics? I'm glad you asked that too. Well, evidence from research studies suggests that probiotics can play an important role in mood disorders such as depression, help with improving digestion and decreasing bloating, improving immune function, as well as fighting acne and skin inflammation. Additionally, some studies even suggest that you're less likely to get diarrhea if you're taking probiotics while on antibiotics. So what are my favorite sources of probiotics? I'm gonna share them with you right now. And the first one on my list is yogurt. Yogurt is one of the most known and best sources of probiotics. And when choosing yogurt, one thing you wanna make sure of is that you're gonna choose one that has active and live cultures. Next up on the list is kefir. And kefir is a traditionally fermented dairy product. However, with the rise in kefir on the market, we've seen that there are dairy-free versions of kefir that can be made with coconut water, coconut milk, or other sweet liquids. Given that it's varied in the different strains of bacteria, kefir is actually thought to be more potent than yogurt. So if you haven't tried kefir yet, it might be something to check out. Next on my list is sauerkraut, and I love sauerkraut. So if you're someone who likes to eat hot dogs during the summer, you're probably used to adding sauerkraut on top. What is sauerkraut? It is finely cut fermented cabbage. And besides the fact that it has all of these probiotics, I also love that sauerkraut is rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Next on the list is kimchi. And kimchi is a spicy Korean side dish and it's usually made from fermented cabbage as well. Now, if you have a stomach ulcer, then this is one you may consider avoiding as spicy foods can be irritating to the line of the gut if you're someone dealing with a stomach ulcer. Next on the list is miso. And miso is a fermented soybean paste and it's also a popular Japanese seasoning that is known to be rich in probiotics. Next up is kombucha, and I love kombucha. It is a delicious fermented sweetened black or green tea drink, and I'm sure if you were to go to your local grocery store, you'll see many varieties of kombucha lining the shelves in the market. Next up on the list is tempeh, and tempeh is also a fermented product. It's a fermented soybean, and it's often used as a substitute for individuals who don't eat meat. So if you're someone who's vegan or plant-based, tempeh is something that you can use as a high-protein substitute for meat. Next up are probiotic supplements, and there are some really important things I want to tell you about probiotic supplements, so let's dive into that. So first thing is that it's really important to consult your healthcare provider if you plan to take a dietary supplement, especially if you have any underlying conditions. Remember that dietary supplements like probiotics do not need a stamp of approval from the Food and Drug Administration, so it's really important to do some research before purchasing one. Some important things to look for with your probiotics are to make sure that your probiotic has strains of either lactobacillus or bifidobacterium, especially since these strains have been heavily researched. Next thing you want to look for is the number of CFUs. And what are CFUs? Those are the colony forming units, and they tell you how many probiotics you will get with each dose. 
the most common dosage is 5 billion to 10 billion colony forming units per day. So make sure that you're checking for that on your product. The next thing you want in your product is for it to have third-party approval. So check that your product has certification from a program such as NSF International, Consumer Lab, or USP, because these programs generally ensure the quality, purity, and potency of your product. And so I'll link my favorite probiotic supplements in the description box down below if you want to check them out and research them for yourself. So uh, which of these probiotics do you currently take or you plan or do you plan to incorporate in your healthy lifestyle? Are you already trying some of these things? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoy this video, I ask that you hit that thumbs up button. Yes, like, like, like this video, share with your friends and subscribe for more awesome content just like this. But before you leave, I want to remind you, you're only one prayer away. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Take care.